We're going back to February 7th, 2010. The New Orleans Saints won the Super Bowl, and I got a Sports Illustrated cover to show for it. This is From the Vault. So 2010, Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints were in the Super Bowl against Peyton Manning and the Indianapolis Colts. It was Super Bowl 44 in Miami, my hometown. I live in New York City, but I'm from Miami, was born and raised there. I worked at the Miami Herald for almost a decade. So it was super fun for me to be back home in my home stadium uh, where I'd covered so many games, covering the Super Bowl. This one I was covering for Sports Illustrated Magazine, which was a super uh, cool thing to do. I was with a great team of photographers, some of the best in the business. Now. The Saints uh, were a great story that season. Hurricane Katrina had ravaged the city about less than five years earlier. And Breeze and the Saints were such a feel good story. It was the first time the Saints have ever been in the Super Bowl. So uh, it was really cool to cover that. Now, the game itself, the way it works is a normal football game. Uh, you might have one or two photographers working for Sports Illustrated, for example. And we like to roam up and down the sidelines so you can put yourself in the best position to make the picture of the game, whether it's the game-winning touchdown or the turnover that changes the course of the game, whatever it is, we all want to get that picture that's either the cover or in the front of the magazine, they have those two-page photographs, they, they call them a double truck for the leading off section. We all want those great action pictures in the magazine. Um, but the problem is for the Super Bowl, there might be for Sports Illustrated alone, anywhere from at the time, especially anywhere from 12 to 16 photographers covering the game. So what they do is they actually assign us positions because otherwise we'd all be on top of each other. We'd all be in the same spot and we'd miss action that maybe went the other direction. So I was assigned to the front row in the stands. We have four corners where uh, photographers can be in that very front row uh, those seats, I think they actually have, the publications actually have to buy those seats because they're very uh, prime real estate, but they usually put a bunch of photographers in those corners. And it's kind of nice because you're a little bit higher. I normally like to get really low and kneel down when I shoot something like football or anything where I want to make people look big. But if I'm not going to be on the field, it's nice to be just a little bit higher. You're like right over the wall and you can get that nice uh, clean shot of any action. Now, the problem is though, I'm stuck in that spot. So anything that happens, past like the 30 or 40 yard line, especially at the other end of the field, the other end zone, even with crazy long lenses, I'm using 600 millimeters, 400 millimeters, whatever I need, it's still gonna be way too far away. So, but I know there are other photographers down at that end for the magazine. So if it comes my way, I just have to nail it. That's my one job. But other than that, you know, you're just kind of stuck where you are. So this game was going along and I really had nothing, right? It was, I was miserable. All the action was down at the other end, all the big plays, all the big touchdowns. Everything was way at the other end of the field. I knew I just had nothing. But then the Colts are down by seven. It's late in the game, about three and a half minutes left. And Peyton's driving down towards my end of the field. So I'm thinking, this is it, man. Peyton's gonna throw a touchdown right in front of me. It's gonna be all mine. I'm gonna nail it. It's gonna be awesome. And so Peyton drops back to pass. He throws the pass right towards Wedgie, Reggie Wayne, who went to the University of Miami. He's a hurricane, go Canes. Um, and, but unfortunately for Reggie and for Peyton and for me, Terry Porter steps in front of Reggie, makes the pick, right? Intercepts the ball, runs back 74 yards the other direction, all the way down, gets a touchdown. Peyton tried to kind of tackle him on the way, but he they just shoved him out of the way, and that was the end of that. And that was it. I mean, it was all the celebration was down there. I could see the photographers at the other end of the field, you know, in the other corner, like celebrating, you know. And I was just like, oh man, I got nothing, right? That was my one chance. The Saints obviously held on. They won the game by by uh, 14 points, and I was miserable. I just had nothing. And then they set up for the celebration at the end of the game and they're on the podium for TV, that Super Bowl podium. And even that, so I'm in like the back corner, they set it up on the 50 yard line all the way up to the sideline, the furthest place from me, right? To face that direction where all the TV cameras are. And I'm just basically behind the podium. So I could have tried to work my way around to the front at that point, but I figured we've got other photographers there. This is the whole point, let them have that shot. I'm gonna stay back here and I'm just gonna shoot it. All the other photographers who were near me, they all left, everybody went to go try to make better pictures. But I just figured I'll stay where I am just in case. I was already kind of miserable. I just, I, I had nothing, right? So uh, Drew Brees is on the podium. His wife and his son come up, a very young uh, son at the time. He was probably, I don't know, around two years old or something. and. Um, they come up, they do, you know, they're on TV 
facing the other direction out of it. And then sort of behind the podium, they're standing there talking. It's little sweet moments between him and his son. And then Drew picks his son up just for a second. The confetti was coming down at that moment. It was kind of nice, but I, again, at this point, I'm not even really thinking it's much of anything because I was just so depressed about not having any big plays in the game. And I, I knew I was just gonna be shut out in the magazine. So um, I turned in my, you know, my cards actually throughout the game were shipping our digital cards, we have people picking them up throughout the from all the photographers on the field, all the Sports Illustrated photographers, and they're taking them right into the photo room during the game. So I ship my last set of cards and that's it, I got nothing. So I go home the next day, Monday, I get an email from the director of photography and he all the email said was, welcome to the club. And I was like, what are you talking about? He said, you got the cover. And I was like, so I've had Sports Illustrated covers before, but I, I'd never had a Super Bowl cover. And I was like, that's that's impossible. You've got the cards mixed up. You put my name on somebody else's photograph by accident. There's no way it's mine. And then he sent me a PDF of the cover and this is it. I mean, it's Drew holding up his kid at that moment with the confetti coming down. Now I originally shot it horizontally as tight as I could. This is what it looks like with the 600 millimeter lens, but uh, the imaging department of the magazine did a very good job cropping it up and pulling that um, frame out of it and using it as the cover. So needless to say, I was very surprised. I never thought I would get the cover from that game. And then I actually ran into Drew at the draft the next season. I was covering that and he was, stand, we were standing next to each other casually and and I told him, oh yeah, you know, I introduced myself and I said, I, I made that cover, that, that cover photo for SI. And he was like, oh my God, he couldn't have been nicer. Thank you so much, gave me a big hug. Was like, he was like, that was an amazing photo. Can I get a print of that? I was like, of course, absolutely. So I sent him a print. So that was pretty cool. Um, and that's the story of the Super Bowl cover. Now, this series from the vault, this is the first one. What I'm doing is each of these photographs that I talk about, I'm gonna tell the story, uh, the behind the scenes of how the picture was made. And then if you want actually a print of that photograph that I'm talking about each week, um, you can get it. So this is the Drew Brees cover. This is what that's gonna look like. I'm printing these on, these are fine art prints on gallery quality matte paper, 11 by 14. Paper's 11 by 14. The print size is obviously a little smaller than that. And I'm hand signing them. So um, I wanna make these accessible to everybody. So they're on sale now, uh, less than a hundred bucks. So you can pick one of those up. I hope you will do that. That's kind of how I'm gonna support this show. So I appreciate you guys doing that. Um, I'm gonna do this every week with a new uh, picture from the vault. I've been a photographer now for 30 years and I've got all kinds of pictures that I'm gonna be digging out. So I hope you'll join me back every week. Pick up a print if you want. You're gonna go to davidbergmanphoto.com. That's where you get those prints, davidbergmanphoto.com. So check that out, the link's below if you need it. Thanks very much for joining me. I'll see you back here next time with another picture from the vault.